when I first got my license, one of the things I struggled to get my head around was all the uh, multitude of different feeder cable types that are on the market. Now, it, for those of us that have been in amateur radio for a while, we we know what all the different feeder cables are and what they're for, but to someone new coming into this uh, hobby, it can be a little bit w bewildering. So I'm going to heavily, heavily simplify this. Um, now, I will put a bit of a caveat in this. Um, different feeder cables are used in different parts of the world. You know, example, um, America, I believe they use uh, LMR. Is it LMR 400 or LMR 600? It's quite popular. Um, never seen it in this country. Uh, Mini 8 or RG8X is the other one. I believe they use quite a bit in America. Hardly ever used in this country. As I say that, I've realised uh, I've got uh, this is a bit of Mini 8 down here. But you will see it in the UK, but not very often. So I'm going to uh, basically break this down into three cables. Now, obviously, you, you've got your Messi and Poloni, which as far as I'm aware, there is only one retailer in the UK that's selling it. And it is starting to become popular and uh, I've heard good things about it from people who have used it, but I've never got my uh, hands on it myself. So I'm, I'm going to keep this simple and go with the three main feeder cables that you would see in most retailers in the UK. And uh, I'll tell you how I would use them. I'll tell you my take on it. So uh, if I switch on to the other camera see here we have three cables so this one on the left is going to be your cheapest to buy which is uh, RG58 and you can see here is quite a thin center conductor um, foam dielectric so you have to be a little bit careful when uh, soldering it otherwise you can melt it and uh, there's your uh, outer braid. Now if we go up to sort of middle price, this is uh, RG213 and uh, you can see now the centre conductors are a lot thicker. Um, thicker dielectric and uh, we've actually got copper on the braiding and if I put it side by side with the RG58 you can see how much thicker it is compared to the RG58. Now, if we go up to sort of the top end that we as amateurs are going to be using, you can get specialist cables that are uh, more expensive than this, but realistically, this is what we're going to be using. This is Westflex 103, and you can see the center conductor there is uh, solid and uh, somewhat thicker than the uh, 213. Again, you've got your dielectric there, and if I can hold that up to the light and get the camera to focus on it, you notice there's holes through the uh, dielectric, so basically it's air spaced. That helps uh, reduce the loss amongst other things. And then you see you've got a uh, copper outer shield here which this is another bit here which I cut off when I stripped this cable back so you've got an extra layer of uh, copper uh, running or an extra shield shall we say of copper and then there's your um, again copper braiding so those are basically the three main types of cable that traditionally have been popular and that you're still going to get in most uh, retailers. So what's the difference between them? Well, let's start with my least favorite. And uh, I have been known to uh, slate RG58 in the past and some, some would say a little unfairly, but uh, it has its place. Um, the problem with RG58 is it's quite lossy over longer distances, especially at higher frequencies. Now, the thing with K2 
coax cable loss is the lower the frequency, the less it matters. The further up in frequency you go, the greater your loss will be per meter of cable. And um, if you want to see the difference, I actually tested five meters of uh, RG58 against about 10 meters of uh, Westflex 103. And I'll put a link to that video at the uh, top of the screen. But basically, um, the 10 meters of Westflex 103 had less loss than the RG58, which was five meters, so half the length. So in other words, RG58, despite being half the length, was more lossy at VHF than uh, Westflex 103. Now, I said RG58 has its place. Um, I personally would use it for very short runs in the shack. So basically patch cables, patching between equipment. So from your radio to antenna switch or radio to amplifier or uh, radio to uh, antenna tuner, etc, etc. The problem with it is over long runs, even at HF, you're going to get a lot of loss in there. Now, you'll get away with it um, you probably get away with it at the lower frequencies, say maybe 160 meters, 80 meters, possibly up to 40 meters. Once you get up to about 20 meters or above, it's uh, starting to get a little bit lossy. So, uh, for all its flaws, RG58 has its place, but the long feeder run from your shack down the garden, up the mast, and to your uh, dual band collinear. Or VHF UHF is not the place so patch cables you know nice short runs indoors absolutely fine anything other than that in the bin so moving on next we have um, RG213 now this the diff big difference between this and RG58 is as I showed you it's a lot thicker much lower loss um, it still wouldn't be my first choice for a lot of applications. I'd sooner go with the uh, Westflex 103. But you'll see why you would use 213 a bit later on, aside from the cost. I'll, uh, I'll come back to the 213 because uh, the Westflex 103 leads into that. And uh, you'll see where I'm going with that in a minute. Now, the Westflex 103, it's got a nice, thick center conductor there and the extra layer of copper on the outside and airspace dielectric as well so much lower loss this is what i would use for long runs from the shack out down the garden this however has an achilles heel aside from the cost which is a lot more expensive than the, the other two and that is what makes it low loss also is its weakness and that is the center conductor. Um, being solid, if you try and flex it too much, you can actually break the center conductor inside. And um, I discovered that by running this up my mast to a uh, beam antenna with a rotator. And um, the continuous turning of the uh, rotator as I turned the beam actually broke the feeder cable. So, this stuff I would use where the antenna doesn't move, where it's not going to be disturbed, where it's not going to be uh, subjected to um, vibrations. So maybe if you've got a collinear, dual band collinear on the roof of your house, which let's face it, isn't going to be on the rotator or moving about, then this is probably the best stuff you're going to get if you can afford it. Um, and I, I say that because Let's be honest, a lot of us are on the budget, so I guess if you can only afford the cheap stuff, then, well, you'll have to make do, but uh, if you can afford the expensive stuff, it's well worth it, because, let's be honest, you go out and spend, um, well, if you're lucky enough to get a nice brand new Yaesu FT991A, which I'd absolutely love to get my hands on, by the way, then that's 1200 quid on the radio. You, you can spend, well, cheap collinear is sort of 50 quid. You, you can spend upwards of 100 quid or more on, a, on an antenna. So, you know, why not just shell out the extra um, 
30, 40 quid, whatever it costs for a decent feeder cable. Now, I said this isn't good for a rotator. So what if you've got a rotator? Well, that's where RG213 comes in. Now, you could run this from the shack up the mast um, to the antenna around the rotator. Um, it's lossier than Westflex 103. But um, it would work, and especially at HF, you're frankly probably not going to notice the difference. But um, what I would do, as my preference, is run Westflex 103 from the shack up the mast to the top of the mast, then just before you get to the rotator, change onto RG213, which of course is more flexible and not as likely to break as the rotator keeps turning. So Westflex 103 from the shack up the mast, then into RG213 um, around the rotator onto your antenna. So that's uh, that's how I would do it. Um, there are other feeder cables out there you'll see um, for mobile applications RG58 is fine um, keep the run as short as possible uh, you will see really really thin stuff uh, I think it's RG174 um, my personal preference I would steer away from that even on HF I, I just don't like the stuff it's too in too lossy and has a habit of breaking as well so I I would not use that um, like I say RG58 for mobile applications keep it as short as possible and uh, if you're out portable and you need something lightweight you probably don't want to be carrying this uh, big heavy stuff around so again RG58 fine for if you're doing portable applications uh, summits on the air that sort of thing but uh, just keep your uh, feeder cables as short as you possibly can so uh, in a nutshell that's uh, that's my take on uh, it's that's my heavily simplified take on feeder cables for uh, newcomers with those three cables you should be able to cater for most applications on your first uh, radio setup obviously there are a lot of other cables out there that you can use some speciality some really expensive uh, you go up into the big tower game there's uh, really really thick commercial feeder cables and that will cost you mega bucks so you're probably not going to come across that some amateurs will never use that even if even with the tower so I have heavily simplified this it, really this video is aimed squarely at uh, newly licensed people just coming into the hobby without a background just trying to get their heads around the different types of feeder cables and what you would use them for so uh, there you go very quick uh, and uh, brief overview on coax cable <laughs>